All right, everyone, welcome back to the Positive Success Show. I have a special guest with us today. His name is Pete McIntosh, and he is a profitability coach. And today, he's going to share with us one of his big ideas for success. So, Pete, awesome to have you on the show. Let Thanks, us know. Dom. Tell us, tell us about, tell us about yourself, what you do, and and share us a little bit of insight into what you think it really takes to be successful. Okay. Uh, so I'm Pete. I live in Tasmania and I help female entrepreneurs, uh, online entrepreneurs. I help them become more profitable. I help them work less, make more and show up in the world in a big way. Awesome. So a concept, what I wanted to share with you today, Dom, uh, it was the concept of the power of an alter ego. And I learned this from a, from a coach of mine who I've worked with called Todd Herman. And he wrote, he wrote the book. He wrote the book. <laughs> He's written the book <laughs> called The Alter Ego Effect. And it's the power of secret identities. And we were just having this conversation and you were talking to me about a goal of yours uh, to do for the rest of the year, to shoot a video every day and go. post it. And you talked about discipline. And I said to you, Todd's concept would challenge that, that if you, if you step into a new identity, a new higher quality, higher powered version of yourself, then then you don't really need to have discipline. Mm. You just become that person. And at the level of identity, it sort of trumps habits, discipline, any sort of externals, because now you've put on the coat that says, I, I'm now Superman. You put on the uniform, put on the jacket. I'm a doctor. I put on my glasses. I'm now 10% more intelligent than the average person because I'm, I'm wearing glasses, right? Martin yeah. Luther King. Yeah, he wore yeah. he didn't need glasses. They were not prescription glasses. He put them on because oh, wow. he he knew that that's a, that's a theory that we sort of most of us carry that people with glasses are more intelligent, maybe a little more nerdy, whatever. So it's about stepping into that identity, that future version of yourself that you can mm -hmm. leverage some kind of hero of yours, uh, some kind of cultural identity. You can make this secret identity of yours so that you don't really have to be disciplined. You step into that, mm -hmm. that persona. You take that on and say, well, what would Superman do here? What so would Clark good. Kent do? He'd, he'd go into the phone booth, he'd rip his suit off, yeah. and he'd become Superman. And Superman has superpowers. And so, so this, is, this is awesome. And He doesn't need the... to be disciplined. He doesn't need to be. He's just, he just puts on the suit, and he has the, pow the powers there. And he, off he goes and saves the day, right? Right, but right. Clark Kent doesn't do that. And so Clark's so, the mild mannered, nerdy guy that I don't know where he works, Wall Street <laughs> or something. So the question is with this whole, you know, you step into the identity. Yeah. What would you say to someone who is scared of stepping into that identity? Like, what, what is that? What is that minute or not minute? What is the thought or what is the, action or what is that trigger that helps yeah. someone get into that identity? Because I, I see with friends, clients, students, you know, they're like, Dom, I'm scared to do this one thing. And yep. as a, you know, as just being a servant leader and, you know, trying to push and inspire others, you know, just, I just say, just do it because it's like, you don't even <laughs> think about it. But then what would you, so in, in terms of this alter ego That's and whatnot, easier said than done. Yeah. How do you do it? How do you transition quickly, like, you know, Superman or Wonder right. Woman or whoever into that superhero? So then you just step into this new identity um, seamlessly. So that, so yeah. that's my question is how do yeah, you, how do you get there? He's got a framework for that in the book, uh, mm -hmm. but I'll just take you through it really quickly. He, he's into some kind of totem or artifact that activates mm -hmm. the identity. So the first thing is to create the identity, okay. which can be a hybrid of, you know, your favorite cultural icons or heroes, yeah. personal heroes. Uh, it can be a hybrid of people. It could be one person. It can be, it, it can be whatever. It's, it's the tapping into the power of your imagination. You can yeah. create this best version of yourself. And then there's an activation event, mm. which could be putting on the glasses, Superman. He went into the booth, right? Uh -huh. Had to find the phone booth. <laughs> and uh, Todd talks about in the book, footballers, he crossed the white line and he would strike his boot. And that was the guy, the alter ego came in then. And then he became this, this, this monstrous footballing 
powerhouse that would just tear the opponents apart off the field. He was a totally different mild mannered persona, but once he crossed the white line and he tapped his boot, that was the activation event for that guy. So he talks about having, yeah, some kind of artifact, piece of clothing, a piece of jewelry, yeah, or just an action, some sort of action that you actually do. And then that's the, that is the triggering moment into st- when you're stepping into the, the alter ego. Oh my and gosh. then he talks about starting off with very small, just try to step into the persona for mm-hmm. very small amounts of time, mm-hmm. just sort of trying mm-hmm. it on. Mm-hmm. And then gradually, and he talks about uh, who are some of the famous people that have had alter egos, uh, Sasha Fierce, Fierce, which is, who's that? That's Beyonce, right? Uh-huh. Beyonce had Sasha oh, wow. Fierce. She was the, that was the persona she stepped into because she was uh, African-American, very conservative, Southern raised Christian family singing in church. And then she's joined this girl group where it's gone very, very raunchy. And she's singing these raunchy lyrics. And that was not, her, that was not her world at all. Yeah. And she knew her family would be uncomfortable with it. So she, she created this, this persona, Sasha Fierce. Wow. And then eventually she says that, you know, she became, she kind of stepped into it so much that she didn't need to trigger it anymore. It was just, she became, that's who she became. So good. I didn't know that story about Beyonce yeah, or, or Martin Luther King Jr. I just, I, I didn't yep. realize that, that that was their, their activation. There's many, wow. Yeah. There's many others in the book. Yeah. Uh, and there's a fi- another famous actor. Was it Humphrey Bogart? I think it could have been him or someone from the old school that he talked about uh, who he had to become. Yeah. an alter ego. And he says, yeah. uh, I don't know what I'm going to butcher the quote, but <laughs> I don't know whether we met along the way or I became him or he became me, wow. but we met somewhere on the line and we basically, we basically merged, but, but he envisioned who he wanted to be. And he, he basically became that person. That is, you know, this is, yeah. this is definitely one of the most fascinating concepts around identity that I've heard of. Um, oftentimes I hear, you know, become, become that, become that best version of yourself, but then actually doing that, like, what does that, what does that, what that take? What does that is, take? Yeah. And how, how do, do you do like, that? How do you actually do like, what does that mean? How like, if I that? say like, Dom, be your, like, if I say be your best self, like, how do you do that, Dom? And, and what I've heard is, you know, you read the books, you learn from, you know, the best in their field. Uh, you start acting out of your own character into this new character. And so very similar, but what I love about this strategy is that you're literally like, I, like putting, putting, putting something on to tell you like, yeah, now I'm this person. And That's right. um, I think I need to get a phone booth, you know, just <laughs> <laughs> where do you, can, can you buy that on Amazon or whatnot? But I think it's such a great, it's such a great um, mindset trigger. Like, you know, when I walk into the office, this is like, this is my domain or this is my space or I'm walking in as, you know, and then the identity. Yeah. Um, the power suit, you know, people talk about oh, putting so their power, yeah. wearing yeah. a piece of clothing that makes them feel mm. strong, powerful, business-like, authoritative, whatever it is. So, and there's been researched on this dump. It's called yeah. enclosed cognition, and it's just in the whole it's cognition. Enclosed cognition. It's just when yeah. we put on a uniform, when the doctor's white coat goes on, and we go to the doctor's surgery, they have authority. When they give us the prescription, we we sort of, mm-hmm. you know, tend to believe them and. Whereas uh, if the coat is different or the coat's not there or the context has changed, we're like, who's this person trying to give me medical advice, right? If the, yeah, if the context true. is not there. True. So uh, if, you know, if somebody comes up into the street and starts telling you to, uh, I don't know, stop driving your car while you're texting and you just think it's a random person, it's, if it's in the police car with mm-hmm. the uniform and the lights are flashing and they say, mm-hmm. excuse me, driver, yeah. you need to put your phone down. <laughs> Yeah. Right. They've got yeah. the uniform. They've got the authority. If it's just a plain clothes person and we think this, this is just some guy in a ute saying, Hey, stop texting. Like, who are you? <laughs> and you see the badge undercover police officer, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> it has the, it has the authority yeah. because of the uniform. So that's really what it's stepping into. You know, and this is, this is great. I hope, you know, the folks that are watching or listening to this episode are just getting that, this is such a great nugget of information. It's just like, have that, have that totem, have that piece that's going to shift your identity. So then you can step into being your better self. Um, 
Yeah. And Pete, like in terms of entrepreneurship and just like doing something new in your life, like what piece of advice uh, beyond stepping into this new identity um, that you can give that's going to help someone who's on the fence of, do I start this new gig? Do I take that next step? Like I'm unsure of myself because there is a lot of anxiety around personal and professional change. Like, can I really do it? Um, and mm-hmm. so beyond this idea of, you know, identity, what, what would yep. you suggest to someone that wants to get started on a new path? Mm. It's going to be, I'm totally biased on, but I'd say, get a good coach. <laughs> you need to, you, I would say, yeah, some yeah. kind of outside, it doesn't have to be a coach, but a mentor, yeah. Yeah. you need some outside perspective yeah. and support, whether it's a community coach, mentor. But, yeah. but somebody outside, like my wife, for example, she's not into business at all, Yeah. but, but she can be really good to help me just unpack mm. any kind of knotted situation mm-hmm, because mm-hmm, she gives mm-hmm. me another perspective. Mm-hmm. Uh, she sees the me that outside of me, <laughs> she's yeah, not inside yeah. my head yeah. and she can reflect stuff. I see you doing this and then switching to that or doing this, <laughs> or I see you sort of dip in energy when you take on that. Maybe that's I don't know. Does that thing excite you anymore? Maybe you, should, maybe you could just stop that. So an outsider's perspective, I think is, yeah. is incredibly, is incredibly valuable. Yeah. The trick is finding the, finding the right person that can right. give uh, good feedback, quality feedback to you and good reflection that that can be tricky to find. So yeah. Awesome. No, that's good that advice. My recommendation. So either, either uh, hire a coach or hire a hire or marry someone who can coach you. <laughs> Find no, a mentor, I, I, find a group of people, a community that are going through the same process Yeah, that can all be helpful. And then as well, just carving out the time for yeah. your own self-reflection. That's yeah. the first thing you can do. That's like good. right now, you don't need anyone else. You just carve out some time, 20 minutes, half an hour, an hour. People are just so busy, Dom. They're not carving out that time for yeah. what about I just turn all that stuff off mm-hmm. and just have just pen and paper, totally analog, hundred mm-hmm. percent analog, get all the devices gone and just spend a little bit of time, just right. brain dumping, just write down yeah. some things, ask yourself a couple of questions and, and just start unpacking some of the stuff that, well, yeah. why would I want to do this? What are the pros and cons of doing this? What if it fails? What will yeah. I lose? And again, it's, it's be helpful to have a framework for those types of questions, but, but just making the effort to to take some time for some self-reflection. There's, there's just so little of that going on, I think, in the world that people are just scrolling and streaming and consuming yeah. content. Yeah. They're not checking in with themselves that they don't know what they want. Yeah. And there's so much stimulation that they don't need to work it out. <laughs> <laughs> just consume the next tidbit coming through, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, no, this is, this is, a couple this is of great. Great, great advice. Great advice. Uh, I'm a big fan of analog journaling. Like I love always pen and paper for me. Love that. I love that. It's, it's a great way to connect with oneself. And Pete, one of the, one of the questions I ask all of my guests on the show is when you're feeling down and you're not wanting to do the things you need to do, or there's an obstacle, a roadblock, what do you Mm -hmm. do or how do you how do you act in order to stay positive despite the challenges? Oh, I go straight to the supermarket and get some ice cream. <laughs> Consume the ice cream on the couch. <laughs> get Netflix. No. No, I How love I it. Stay- ice cream. Ice cream <laughs> makes people happy. <laughs> these are no, these are all strategies. Everyone's different. Everyone's different. I don't really go out and buy ice creams, really. Um, so how do you, so to just tell, recap it for me again, how do you do something? How do you get something done that you don't want to do? <laughs> or how do you like, or when, that you're when committed to are... doing, but you, you, you're blocked and, and you've temporarily got to. Yeah. Or, or, you know, something doesn't, you make a decision, something doesn't go your way. And now you're like, yep. you know, you're down, you're down in the dumps and you're feeling like, I don't know if I'm going to continue. So okay. I, I think a lot of folks experience many, many folks experience that. And even I did, uh, <laughs> So go ahead. Me too. Go ahead. So, yeah, that I think um, again, having support, people around you that are 
a community of like-minded people that are also doing difficult things, trying to make change that yeah. that can be really helpful. So in my case, you know, being around entrepreneurs yeah. who are, you know, dealing with businesses that go up and down teams that uh, perform and sometimes don't perform and sometimes need to be hired and sometimes need to be fired. Yeah. Uh, difficult conversations with clients or, or all of these things happen when you're in business. So uh, having a supportive community, I think is, is really invaluable in being able to tap into that and leverage, leverage community. I think because the the longer we stay with it on our own, yeah, in that knot, yeah, uh, the more likely we are to spiral down. So mm. uh, I would say, yeah, getting some support, outside support, having community around you of people that are doing the doing something similar, yeah, doing trying to do big things in the world, trying to do difficult things. That's what I would say, Dom. Awesome. Awesome. Pete, yeah. this is so support. great. Pete. <laughs> so just to, just to share with our viewers and listeners, uh, Pete and I, like we met through just support groups with entrepreneurs. And this is exactly what we do is, you know, we help cheer each other on um, through everything. And that's really what you need. Like when you want to get to that next level of success and you want to continue feeling those positive emotions, getting back up when things get hard, it's important to have your Pete's of the world, you know, your, you need, your Dom's you of the need. world. Like there's a lot of, there's yeah. a lot of folks out there uh, that are doing what you want to do. And so you just got to reach out to them and work together. So I love, I love Pete, you know, the, the piece of advice that you shared with us on the power of identity uh, and also just self-reflection, coaching, get a community, you know, very foundational things to have in your life, regardless if you're an entrepreneur, entrepreneur or not. Like, I think we mm. all need that sense of connection and that sense of accountability from others. Um, yeah. So final well, question. I think, Dom, if you, mm, if you look at like the sporting world, when we were kids and played sports, you know, we, we just wouldn't go on the sporting field without a coach. We just don't put kids on fields without, it's true. there's always a coach, you know, and then we grow up and then the coaching, the coaching disappears. Right. Where's the coach? Right. And then suddenly, right. I don't know, you're 18 years old or 21 years old. You're supposed to, you're supposed to work it out by yourself. <laughs> it's the, Right. Yeah. And then a lot of us didn't get great mentoring or role modeling yeah. from our parents. Yeah. yeah. So then we're out in the world of adulthood and relationships and, you know, where's the coach? <laughs> where's the where's coach? The, where's the guardrails of yeah. life to try and yeah. keep me in, in my lane yeah. and on track. Yeah. Yeah. And the world okay. is now set up to pull us off, off track yeah. And, yeah. and in a million different directions. So, so, uh, Getting people around you that know what you want in life can help you work out what's in what you want in life, and then keep you keep you in your lane. <laughs> you, it's a huge value, right? And yeah. we get that at work. If you get a job, you got a boss. They can they're trying to keep you. Hey, you need to stay in your lane. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, I can't have you around here anymore. <laughs> um, right? So right. you get that Absolutely. sort of thing in the workplace, uh, but in in overall life, you, you yeah. sort of you sort of you sort of don't. It's not yeah. normal, right? Yeah, no, this is so true. So true. Well, there you have it, everybody. Everyone needs a coach. Even coaches need coaches. <laughs> a no, coach really. Or like us, accountability partners. Accountability. Some kind of some kind of tribe that yeah. is, 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 is will cheer them on, will help pull them, drive them into the in the direction that they want to go and and, awesome. and pick them up when they fall down. Awesome, awesome. Pete, you're awesome. Pete, where can people find you? How can they connect with you? Oh, look at that fire sign <laughs> and heart sign. Love. Oh, there you go. <laughs> How can people find me? I'm so yeah. difficult to find, Dom, but uh, <laughs> can I put a, where, where are you going to, we can put a link in the. Yeah, I'll put it. I'll put, I'll, put I'll put a link in I'll the put show a link notes. in the comments. Yeah, there you go. You can, there you go. You can find me. So there you have it, everyone. You can find, Pete you can find McIntosh. Anyone. He is an awesome, awesome entrepreneur, friend, colleague. Uh, you need help with your profitability or you just need help in general. Pete's your guy. Uh, thank you so much, Pete, for being on the show. Pleasure, Dom. Thanks. Love to do it again sometime.